Hello and welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition admin tutorial all about pruning your world. What's pruning your world? Well, it is a way to trim the chunks outside of your world borders so that you can regenerate valuable resources and also reduce your world file size. I am currently on my VIP patron server which is a server that many many of my VIPs play on and they like to do lots and lots of exploring. They go off to the far reaches of the end to get shulker boxes. They disappear off to the far reaches of the overworld for things like sand and mesa materials and gravel and all that good stuff. And now that the nether update is out, they go to the far reaches of the nether to find things like bastions and gilded blackstone and all of those other valuable resources. And what happens is the world file size goes crazy. We shot up after the nether update came out from just under one gigabytes in world file size to over 1.6 gigabytes in file size. And there are a lot of reasons for that. One of the reasons is maps, which if you recently watched my maps tutorial video, I've got some software that will help you deal with the ridiculous amount of file size that maps take up. And the other reason is just explored chunks. So you need to get rid of your explored chunks in order to bring the world file size down. And the reason the world file size is important on Bedrock Edition is because the way Bedrock Edition works, the bigger your file size is, the longer it takes to process, the more laggy your world becomes, and it starts to have an incredibly negative effect on your world once the world file size gets up above one gigabyte. And yeah, it becomes very, very difficult to manage and do admin on as well. So it's a good idea to keep it low down. And I've developed a tool called a prune tool that's going to do exactly that. But Foxy No Tail, the prune tool already exists if you use MCC tool chest. It does. Yes, they've got a delete or prune area thing here, which is very basic. It doesn't actually allow you to pick what dimension you want to prune. It only asks you for the coordinates. So I guess it does either just the overworld or all the dimensions. And also, if you load up their map system, you can do it here at the bottom of the corner and you can then choose what dimension you want to do. The problem with this though, if you've got a large world like we're playing with at the moment, it takes an extraordinarily long amount of time for it to load in the actual data so that you can actually start the prune and the prune itself is also incredibly slow. Now I don't know about you, but when you're hosting as many different servers as I am, you need the admin process to be as quick and as painless as possible. So I've developed this tool that will help with that process. So we've actually got quite a lot of files here, but don't let that overwhelm you. There are lots of different ways to run this software. We can just double click it and open it up like that and run it from the console. Or we can run it as a command line tool, or we can even run it through one of these bat files. Before we do any of that, let's actually see how this works. The first thing we're going to need to do is put a world folder inside of this world folder. So it's got a world folder to deal with. So that world we were just on is here. I'm going to highlight all of those files and I'm going to copy them. And I'm going to open that world folder and I'm going to paste them in here. Once they've all copied in, if I run prune, first thing it's going to do is check the world exists, which it has, and it says it does. And then it's going to ask me a question. What dimension do I want to prune? The nether, the overworld, or the end? So the overworld is zero, as it says above there. It tells you minus one for the nether, zero for the overworld, or one for the end. If I press O, it's then going to ask me what coordinate I want to prune. So I want to go from minus 4,000 and minus 4,000 to 4,000 by 4,000. That's my usual overworld coordinates that I prune for my worlds. Yours might be different to that. Yours might be offset. You might want to do it in a completely different area altogether. Now, what this is going to do is anything outside of those coordinates it's going to get rid of and just leave that area in the middle for us to play in. So what it's going to do then is work out what your relative chunk co coordinates are because it does it by chunk and not by block. And then it's going to ask you what you want to do. Do you want to go for it? Press Y. Do you want to abort this? Press no. Or do you want to just scan and see what's going to happen? So I'm going to scan this particular time and see what's going to happen to this world if we choose to prune it. So once it's finished calculating, it then tells us that there are 6.8 million keys in the database that it's got to go through. And then it will start going through them and it will give you a handy percentage there to tell you how much it's done. 
And then once the process is complete, it's now told me that there are 1.3 million database keys that need to be deleted. So they're database keys for data that's outside of those chunks. And that there are also 25 entries of portal data that was found outside of the prune area that will be deleted. What's portal data? Well, I'm glad you asked. In your world, if we look at the world in MCC Toolchest, not only have we got the chunk information, which is the stuff, these are the keys that it says it's going to be deleting, and there are lots and lots of keys per chunk. There's keys that exist for biome data, chunk data, entity data, tile entities, all sorts of data there. But also in the world, you've got portals. Now, these are only nether portals. It's not end portals, but in these portals, there are 863 of them in this particular world. But these aren't the physical portals. These are just the links. Every time you create a portal in the world, it then creates a link to another portal in the nether dimension. Or if you built one in the nether, it creates the link to the overworld dimension. And these links tell you where the portals are so this one says here that this is a dimension zero. So this is an overworld portal with these coordinates. If we scroll that down this list towards the bottom, you'll see that these ones have dimension ID of one, which are nether portals. So what we need to do is get rid of any portal data for portals outside of our pruned area as well. Otherwise, if we ever go through a portal to a portal that's been deleted, if this link data still exists, we end up on the other side, but the world won't build another portal and we end up with a ghost portal and then we can't come back again. So we need to delete these portal records so that it will then generate a brand new portal in the world when we go through the portals. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter. It does it for you. You don't have to worry about it. So I'm happy to go ahead and run that through and I could go through the process of typing it all in manually again and then pressing yes instead. But I, I don't want to do that. I want to be more automated than that. So I've got some bat files here or batch files. Now I've got one that says run overworld, run nether, run end and run all. The run overworld will basically do exactly what we did, but it's already got the coordinates in place and it's pointing to that world folder there. You can put whatever data you want in here to make it as automated as possible. You can put whatever coordinates you want in. Now the zero is the dimension. So if this is for the overworld, you need to keep that the same. But you could put in that your world is in C drive, my world, and then world there or whatever. And you can then run this script and it's going to do it all for you. The only problem with these scripts is that if you click on them and run them, you don't get the confirmation of do you want to proceed because these are designed to basically make your life quicker and easier. Now, the run all one is separate because this will actually do each different dimension. But if we look inside here, it's actually pulling the information for the chunks from this options file. And the reason I've done that is just to make your life easier. So again, we can tell it what world folder directory it is, and we can put in the different coordinates for each of the different dimensions. So if you want different coordinates for your overworld, nether and end dimensions, you can put them in here. I certainly do. For our overworlds, we prune at 4,000. In the nether, we do at 2,000. And in the end, we do at 1,000. Once you put in what you want in there, you can double click run all. And that's going to open two windows. The first one is just a overview of what's going on through the system as a whole. So it says it's pruning the overworld. Please wait. And then it's actually going to go through what we saw earlier, but it's not going to ask us any questions. It's going to just do it. And once it gets to the end, that's going to close and it'll move on to the nether. And once that one's done, it'll close and it'll move on to the end. And once it's all complete, then it's done. Your world is pruned. You don't have to do anything else. And there we go, that's all done. And what happens each time this runs is it actually gives us a log of what's going on. So now it will do a different log for each of the dimensions. If we look at this one, this will have been for the overworld and it shows us how many keys has been deleted and how many portals it's been deleted. It also tells us how long it took. So it took 2.2 minutes to do the overworld. It took 2.1 minutes to do the nether and it, create, and it deleted three portals for that. And it took 1.9 minutes to do the end. And in the end, you can see there were over 2 million keys deleted because there's such a massive area of the end had been explored. Now we can check and see how much world size we've saved. If we right click and look at the properties, you'll actually see that the world file size has gone up from 1.6 gigabytes to 2.27, nearly 2.3 gigabytes, which is ridiculous how much it's gone up. 
But don't worry, as soon as we start playing in the world, that is going to start coming down significantly. It's just the way the level database system works. Before we go and play on that world and check it all out, I'm actually going to open it up in MCC tool chest and I'm going to check the overworld has been trimmed, which it has. All of the keys outside of the area that we wanted have been deleted. The nether is nearly all gone and the end as well is much, much smaller than it was. And if we open up the map, you'll see it starts filling in much more quickly now because there's just not as much data that it's got to go through. So yeah, the whole system's running a lot more quickly now. The world size will reduce dramatically now. So let's open this up in Minecraft and see what happens. So in order to do that, I need to go into the world folder inside of our application and copy all of those files. And in the Minecraft world folder that we copied it from originally, I'm going to delete all of those files. Now make sure you've got a backup before you do that. And I'm going to paste these new files in. I have already got a backup, so I'm not worried. And just before we go into the world, I'm going to check that file size again. It's 2.27 gigabytes. Now let's go into the world. And that's loaded perfectly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly around a little bit. I'm going to explore the extents of this immediate area that I'm around. I might even pop my head inside the nether. And you'll see after being in this world for less than five minutes, that file size will have already dramatically reduced. And I'm going to pop myself into the nether and just make sure everything in here is okay, which it looks to be absolutely fine. So now let's check the file size. I've been in here for maybe two minutes. Highlight those files again, right click, click properties, and there we go, 1.17 gigabytes it's now down to. So it's reduced by a whole 1.1 gigabytes for being in the world for just two minutes. That's how effective this is, which is amazingly down 500 megabytes from when we originally started this process. So there we go. If you want to get your hands on this handy little bit of software, you can go to foxynotel.com to download it. And you can either use it, like I said, as the console, or you can run it from command line and make your own scripts, or you can use one of these bat files and edit them to make it however you want it to be. The other tools you might want to consider while you're there is my kill maps and lost maps scripts, which I actually made another video on. You can check that out as well. Both of those are available on my website and both of those really drastically help you reduce your world file size as well. Anyway, that is everything from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a like. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.